good morning all welcome back to our course on the c programming language in today's session we are going to discuss about the part 2 of uh, the structures in the c programming language uh, the topics what i am going to discuss under this part 2 is we'll see how to declare structure variables and we'll also see what is the total memory that is occupied by the structure variables and then we'll see how the memory is allocated for these structures these are the three topics that is the declaration of structure variables and the total memory that is occupied by the structure and the memory allocation these are the three topics which I am going to discuss under today's session. Right. So in the previous session we have seen some of the important concepts related to the structures where we have gone through the definition of the structure and as I told that the structure comes under the concept of user defined data types. That is the user has to create his own data type. For this we have explained two different steps where in step one we have the step called as define the structure in this step we have seen that what are all the various members that should be included in the structure has to be defined and the second step is declaring structure variables so our topic of in interest under this particular session is the step two of how we are going to declare the structure variables so let us define the structure first we'll go with the same previous example what we have discussed in the earlier uh, discussions that is i'm going to create a data type called struct person struct followed by person and after that i have the name of the person as one member and then I have the gender of the person as the second member which is of type character and then I have location as the third member which is also of character array and finally let me take it as uh, the salary of the person these are all the four data members that is present uh, for this struct person and as i told that in the previous session that while defining the structure the memory will not be allocated the memory will only be allocated only when you are declaring the structure variables so we will see this second step of how we can declare the structure variables the structure variables can be defined in two ways let me write it here declaring structure variables so this can be done in two ways the first one is at the time of definition itself that means at the time of defining the structure you can create or you can declare the structure variables and the second one is you can create the structure variables or you can declare the structure variables anywhere in the program let us see the first method where we are going to declare the structure variable at the time of defining the structure itself we know how to define a structure struct person and then I have this car name of 50 and I have gender for this person data type and I have location for this data type that is struct person and then I have the integer variable which is called as a salary and when you 
end this structure definition with a closing curly brace. Instead of putting the statement terminator like this, you can declare the structure variable at this particular point that is before semicolon. For example, let me take the structure variable as p1. So I can declare like this and you can end it with a semicolon. So at this particular point, this from here to here, it is the defining the structure that is step one. And the last one where you have added this variable before this semicolon is step two, which is declaring struct variables. So two steps at one shot, right? So like this, you can create the structure variables, any number of structure variables. For example, I want to create five structure variables. So before this semicolon, you can give the structure variables like P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5 like this. And once you are done with creating the required number of structure variables, you can end it with a semicolon. So you are creating five different structure variables. Now uh, remember that P1 is a variable of type struct person. This is similar to that of user defined data type. For example, if I take salary here, salary is a variable of type integer. Similarly, P1 is a variable of type struct person. Similarly, P2 is also a variable of type struct person. P3, P4 and P5. All these are variables of type struct person. This is the new data type you have defined. So you are creating the new data type variables. And once you declare the structure variables, then the memory will be allocated for the structure variables. How much memory is going to be allocated for these structure variables and uh, uh, how it is going to be allocated that is uh, we'll be going to discuss about these two topics in the second and third parts of this session. But right now we remember that since you have declared the structure variables the memory will be allocated separately for all these variables. So P1 will be allocated separate memory space, P2 will be allocated separate memory space. Like that P3, P4 and P5 will be allocated different memory spaces. This is very important point. Always remember that in step one that is while defining the structure no memory will be allocated but while declaring the structure variables the memory will be allocated and every variable will have its own space. And within this uh, variable, every member will have its own space. So name, person one of name will have its own memory allocation. Person one of gender will have its own memory allocation. Location of person one will have its own location. And salary of person one will have its own memory allocation. Similarly, P2. Name of P2, gender of P2, location of P2, and salary of P2. Everything will have different memory locations. So this is how the first method of declaring the structure variables at the time of defining the structure itself can be done. And the second method, let me go with the second method. That is uh, declaring structure variables anywhere in the program. So this is uh, the second method where we can declare the structure variables and how we can declare the structure variables. The, the, the thing here is you can you, you want to separate the step one and step two. So you will be defining the structure at one location and you will be declaring the structure variables at some other location. So for example, let me define the structure struct person and then I have care name. I'm just rewriting the things here 
and care gender care location and int salary so this is defini defining the structure so once you define the structure you can declare the structure variables anywhere in the program you can declare the structure variables in the main you can declare it in the function one or function two anywhere in the program you can declare right so what you can do is you can simply open your main function and you can create the structure variables of this data type as i told that the new data type what you have created under this section is struct person so you have to create a variable of type p1 so you have to first make use of the data type which is struct person and after this you can give the structure variable p1 so p1 is a structure variable of type struct person this is the meaning of this statement similarly you can give any list like this p3 so i have created three structure variables p1 p2 and p3 and these three structure variables are of type struct person so memory will be allocated individually for all these three variables that is p1 p2 and p3 and as i told that every member of this variable will have its own separate memory right so after this assume that there is another function f1 in the same program here also you can create the variables of the struct person so i can make use of struct person p4 similarly there exists another function f2 assume that there exists another function f2 here also you can create the variable of type struct person so like this when you define a structure globally you can make use of that global definition of the structure or you can create the variables of the structure in any of the function in the program so you have created three variables in main one variable in function one and another variable in function this is how you can declare the structure variables uh, by using the second method and once we are done with this particular part let us discuss what is the total memory that is allocated the second part of our today's topic that is total memory allocated by the structure for the structure so the total memory allocated for a structure is equal to sum of memories allocated for individual data members sum of memories allocated for individual data members this is very important point regarding this total memory allocated for the structure why because this is the only difference that we have between these structures and unions where unions is going to be discussed in the next coming sessions so the total memory allocated for a structure is equal to the sum of memories allocated for individual data members let us say this is the structure that i have defined here and now i want to make use of or i want to create a structure variable p1 so i can create like this struct person let me create two variables p1 comma p2 since this is the declaration statement and we know that in c programming language the memory will be allocated at the time of declaration so p1 and p2 will have its own memory allocations so how much total memory is being allocated for p1 how much total memory is allocated for p2 this is the question here so what happens here is according to the definition total memory allocated for a structure is equal to sum of memories allocated for individual data members so if you consider this person data type 
द फर्स्ट मेम्बर इज द नेम विच ऑक्यूपाइज फिफ्टी बाई सिंस कैरेक्टर इज वन बाइट एंड हियर आई हैव डिक्लेयर द एरे विथ फिफ्टी कैरेक्टर्स सो दिस इज फिफ्टी बाइट्स and similarly gender char gender this is also a character therefore it occupies one byte and similarly the location also is a character and we have 50 characters therefore this is 50 bytes and here salary is 4 bytes so if you add up all these things 50 plus 50 and this is 105 bytes so total 105 bytes of memory will be allocated for each and every variable of the structure so p1 will occupy 105 bytes and p2 will occupy 105 bytes so this is the total memory that is created or allocated by the compiler for each and every variable of structure so it differs from one uh, structure to another structure for example assume that another structure i have defined it with uh, like uh, a book which may consists of only 60 bytes like that every structure will have the memory allocated which depends upon the members that are uh, embedded inside the structure definition right so if you go and find the size of this p1 i told that this is 105 bytes and uh, similarly p2 is also 105 bytes but if you find the size of this variables size of uh, p1 then you will get it as 108 bytes it's not 105 bytes why because here you can see that this char gender is only one byte but remember that this one byte cannot be read by the computer or the processor the reason is the processor will read one word at a time one word in the sense if it is a 32 bit processor so it is four bytes so one read operation will exactly read four bytes at a time similarly one write operation will write four bytes at a time so always remember that the processor always works on the words concept not on the byte concept so the processor is not capable of reading one byte at a time it is capable of reading only one word at a time so four bytes will be allocated for this character but out of these four bytes only the first byte will be used by the program and the remaining 3 bytes will be wasted so this is called as structure padding this is called as structure padding so who is doing this who is performing this padding means the compiler automatically pads this structure so if you are defining or if you are defining a member of a structure which is less than one word you may be in an assumption that you are going to allocate only one byte less than one word but it doesn't happen in the computers so the processors are always meant for reading the data on a word basis so if it is a 32 bit it is 4 bytes if it is a 64 bit it is 8 bytes like that so one word that is four bytes will be read at a time therefore you cannot allocate one byte for this character you will be allocating you means the compiler the compiler will be allocating four bytes but only one byte out of those four bytes will be used by the compiler and the remaining three bytes will go waste so this concept of padding the lower order data types with more number of bytes is called as the structure padding this is not that much important but you just remember the concept that there exists a concept called structure padding where the compiler will automatically allocate the extra memory or pad the uh, variables which are having less memory occupation when compared to that of one word right so this is the second method of 
this is uh, the total memory that is occupied by the structure and the last point what we are going to discuss under this uh, part 2 of structures is uh, how the memory is allocated if we go to the concept of arrays we will define the arrays such that it is a collection of elements of similar data type and they occupy the contiguous memory locations the same concept of allocation of memory for different members of the structure will be done in the contiguous me memories only so structures also follow the concept of contiguous memory locations or allocations right so for example let me take the same structure struct person care name of 50 care gender care location of 50 and int salary let me define one variable here this is the first method of declaring the structure variables so once you declare the structure variable the memory will be allocated by the compiler assume that the base address of this p1 base address in the sense the starting address of this p1 is 1000 right the entire block of memory so 105 this is 50 and this will be again 50 this is 1 and this is 4 so total 105 bytes will be allocated by the compiler we have seen it earlier and the entire 105 bytes will be called with the common name which is called as p1 variable name and see here the 50 bytes that is starting from 1000 to 1049 this entire thing is called as the name member of the structure p1 and after that i have one byte i told that we cannot allocate one byte therefore this entire four bytes will be used for gender and out of those four bytes only one byte will be used for gender but allocation happens for all the four bytes and after that i have this bits let me change the color so from here everything 50 bytes will be for location so here it is 1049 and the starting address of gender will be 1050 and here it is 1053 the starting address of location will be 1054 and then and the last location is just four bytes and it represents salary and this is 1103 and here the starting address of salary will be 1104 and the last address will be 1107 so this is how the memory will be allocated the point what i am going to stress here is always remember that the memory for the members of the structure variable will be allocated in the contiguous memory locations same as that of the arrays See, for example if you declare another variable p2 struct person p2 what happens here again 108 bytes of memory will be allocated first 50 bytes will be for name of p2 next four bytes will be for gender of p2 next 50 bytes will be for location of p2 and next four bytes will be for salary all these things will be in the contiguous memory locations here it is 2054 and it will be 2203 
it will be 2204 and it will be 2207 so this is how the memory is going to be allocated physically in the memory locations so that's all for today's session before ending up this session let us discuss what we have discussed uh, let us have a quick recap of what we have discussed under this part two of structures we have started the session with uh, the declaration of structure variables where the user defined data types uh, where we can do this declaration of structure variables in two ways the first method is at the time of defining the structure itself the second method is anywhere in the program so the first method is while you define the structure you can give the list of variables uh, separated by commas before this semicolon that itself is declaring the structure variables and the second method of de declaring the structure variables is where you can declare the structure variables anywhere in the program so you define the structure and in main you can create any number of variables of the structure or in f1 f2 anywhere you can declare after this declaration part we have gone through the total memory allocated by the structure the total memory allocated by the structure is equal to sum of memories allocated for individual data members we have seen it with an example also and this p1 will be having 105 bytes similarly p2 will be having 105 bytes but when you go to the size of p1 you will get the output as 108 bytes the reason for this one is the concept of structure padding where the compiler automatically pads it with uh, the empty bytes uh, since it is capable the processor is capable of reading only one word at a time and then we have moved through the discussion of uh, the third part of our uh, interest that uh, how the memory will be allocated by the compiler the simple point is memory for the members of the structure will be allocated in the contiguous memory locations we have seen this with an examples of p1 and p2 also so that's all for today's session thank you one and all for joining the session in the next part we'll continue with the same structures concept and in that is the part three where we'll be discussing about the nested structures Thank you all.